ongoing recovery operations that are going to continue until we get all the debris cleared and uh, we find the second body. We've only recovered one body so far. I do want to thank some agencies that we partner with all the time that helped us in this tragic, our tragic time. It's the Texas Department of Public Safety, the U.S. Coast Guard and their boat crews, Pasadena Police Department, Pasadena Fire Department, the Port of Houston Authority, and also the Harris County Sheriff's Department. They came out, started search and rescue immediately after the accident occurred, and have been on scene helping us with recovery. I want to pass on to our families, especially the families of our victims, that our love and our condolences are with them right now. We have personnel from the aviation facility in the National Guard reaching out, wrapping their arms around the family members, helping them through this terrible time, helping them grieve, and helping them cope with the situation they're facing right now. We have grief counselors there, we have uh, unit members, and uh, our family support teams there also. I ask you to respect their privacy, their uh, at-home grieving. When we release the names uh, shortly, I ask you not to come uh, and visit their house. Let them and their families uh, hold themselves together and let us put our arms around them so that we can get through these times. There's an investigation team coming from the Department of the Army from Fort Rucker, Alabama. They're called the uh, Consolidated Accident Investigation Team or Centralized Accident, Accident Investigation Team. It's a team of experts that will help us determine the cause of the accident. Safety is always paramount and if this accident was preventable, we want to find out how it could have been prevented and if it was caused by uh, some other factor, we identify that and mitigate that for the future for all helicopter aviation. As was stated before, the details of the investigation will not be released until signed off by the Secretary of the Army, and that will take some time. I just need you to know it's very thorough. They'll be gathering data, gathering information, gathering videos, trying to piece, piece together what actually happened and then they will release that report at a future time. I don't have a date for you on that. I just don't know the time frame it takes. Generally, they're under a pretty tight time frame, but it's around 30 days as a minimum before they'll brief the Secretary of the Army and get permission to release the information. As uh, developments occur, we will keep you updated, but I really want you to know that our hearts and our greatest condolences and sympathies go out to the families of our Texas heroes who died yesterday. They're on a normal training mission, doing what National Guard members do every day, training to go to war, and also training to defend America. So we lost two great Americans yesterday, and we lost two great Texans yesterday. I ask for your prayers, and I ask that God bless them, and God bless their families especially. God help us to help them get through this time, and in the end, God bless Texas. Thank you for your time. There'll be some people here for more specific questions for you. I think I've given you a fair amount of information to help you, help you see the trying times you're going through. Appreciate it. Thank you. Part of the investigation, uh, I won't go into details regarding uh, that kind of stuff. Can you just reiterate, the second body is still out there, they haven't found We are still conducting search and recovery operations. Does so this have found the body or they just have found We're still conducting search and recovery operations. Does this type of aircraft have a black box or data recorder of any type on it? It like, does. The, okay. the black box or the flight data recorder has been recovered. It has, has you yes, said? Yes, sir. How long is the flight? As part of the investigation, I can't go into any details concerning that. Was there any weapons right on board? This aircraft was not armed. So they were just training and then... This was a routine mission, a routine flight. Uh, the pilots need to uh, fly a certain number of hours per month to maintain their currency. Uh, so they can continue to fly the aircraft. So they, they fly, I, I don't know the number of hours uh, that they're required, but they, they're all highly trained, highly skilled pilots. Do you know of any similar incidents involving a patch of helicopter? I do not, no ma'am. That, nothing that would pertain to this one. Do you know how long they were in the air before it came down? That's part of the accident investigation, so I cannot get any details of that. The General mentioned uh, data information, other videos that you're looking through. Uh, where are the videos coming from? Witnesses or was there a camera on the helicopter itself? There's no, there's no cameras other than just the initial, the, uh, it's called a, uh, there's a camera on the, on the aircraft that's for reconnaissance. It was not being used for this. Uh, 
there are surveillance cameras from the court and things like that that are part of the investigation that, they, that they'll be looking at. To, uh, Did help any of those surveillance cameras record the incident just prior to and as it as, as, as part of the investigation, so I can't go into details of that. At what point do you think you'll be releasing the names? It'll be this later this evening. We, uh, we have to follow military protocol uh, 24 hours after notification next of next kin, so we're, we're nearing that time, so it'll be later this evening once we release the names. And it's a press release. Could you tell me when the last time you lost National Guard soldiers, I guess, on, on home soil is doing routine things? Uh, I do not have that kind of information. How long have they been serving? Uh, I'm not sure uh, their service dates. I know that they uh, have years of flying this aircraft. Uh, it, to become a pilot on any aircraft, you have to have years of training. So they've been they've been in a while. I'm sorry. Go ahead. For this one here? No, ma'am. They were just flying to get their hours in for currency. Yes. This is a very safe aircraft. But it's part of the investigation, the maintenance for this particular aircraft. That re that's part of the investigation. So we can't go into details about that. But the the uh, AH-64 Longbow Apache Longbow is a very safe aircraft. It's a great track record. It's my impression that the pilots on Blackhawks and Apaches, they're fairly elite pilots. So they knew what they were doing. All of our pilots are highly trained, highly skilled pilots, very professional. Uh, and like I said, we can't go into details. We don't know what happened to this aircraft, why it went down. Uh, that'll come out in the investigation in the, in the months and days to follow. Do you know when the last time it was installed? I do not. And again, that would be part of the investigation. All that stuff is basically what happens is the maintenance records and things like that, all that has to do with pertaining to this particular aircraft are impounded and become part of the accident investigation. It's the, uh, uh, sir, do you know that? The consolidated uh, Army Indian accident team. And uh, it's it's a conglomerate. Uh, this is Colonel Michael Dye. He's our state aviation officer. I'm the state aviation officer in Texas. And uh, it's a conglomerate of the Department of the Army uh, aviation folks, the Army uh, Aviation uh, Safety Center, and they also bring in uh, experts from. Uh, National, no, the National uh, NTSB, NTSB, and, and it's, a, it's a conglomerate of folks that come in and help us with the investigation, and we're also bringing in engineers to inspect the aircraft to see if there was any type of engineering flaws or anything like that. Some of the people that we talked to yesterday who live right over here in the neighborhood say that they heard an explosion. Can you talk about that? I mean, what would that have been? That, Ma'am, that's part that's of the accident investigation, so we can't go anywhere. Maybe roughly what the distance is from the debris field. I understand there's debris scattered all throughout this area. Yeah. It's, 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 it's part of the accident. It is in this area. It's a large debris field, so we're going to be working diligently with the accident investigation to, to, to pick up all the pieces. So if I can ask the colonel, though, maybe go into, I guess, the, from your perspective, the safety record of the attachments. It's an outstanding safety record. Um, the Army has very few accidents in that aircraft, um, and you know, it's been my experience that it, it's been has an outstanding safety record. So when you heard about this yesterday, you were probably as stunned as anyone. I was astounded. I, I couldn't believe it. How so? I just you don't you don't ever expect this. This unit's never had an accident with one of these aircraft, so it's uh, it, it came as a surprise. This, this unit's never had it. This particular unit. And over it, I guess, in Ellington, what is the mood over there today? Uh, it's somber. They, they've lost a member of their family. And, uh, and the National Guard is a little different than active duty. Uh, we're a tight, close-knit family. Uh, we all know each other's wives and kids and everything. So it's just a somber mood. Everybody's still processing the loss of, uh, of these two great Texans in America. And what the general saying, We have a, a, 
fabulous support system within the National Guard, Texas Military Department, uh, to, to help any of our uh, service members, spouses, or significant others in times of loss. Yes, ma'am.